A lot of people don't realize this, but the internet was created so that we can make cat videos. It's all about the cats. You know, cats rule the world, right? Uh, we have a problem with feral cats in my neighborhood. And these are such cute little problems. It's easy to see why we wind up having too many cats running around. They don't just eat mice, though. They eat everything. And they're going to eat all my frogs and lizards and everything. So I'm going to have to find homes for these. Bless their hearts. Pretty kitties right here on the homestead. I don't know if y'all can see it. <laughs> well, I know you can. But and most of y'all recognize what this is probably. We got an awful lot of poison ivy I'm standing in right now. Uh, and a rare break from the rain over the last few days. So, once again, we're on the berry cam. Let's get in here. Let's go in here deep like. Well, let me show you this. Somebody was wondering about my blueberry bush. So I'll see if I can show you. This is one of them. I've got three more, three or four more back in another area. I've got to get to them. But uh, it does, it's not loaded with them, but it does have a have quite a few. And I do intend to, to prune these. Let's get you in deep. That deep berry cam action. Look at that. You ever seen that kind of action? Now, I'm not gonna, not gonna, you know, bore everybody by me picking all these blackberries and watching y'all having to watch me take one and hear me eating them, all right? And telling you how good they are there are people out there with channels that do so much cooking and good eating that make me hungry all the time and they just don't understand that's brutal it's brutal and I'm not gonna do that y'all um, maybe I'll do a little bit of a little bit of fast motion stuff in here I need to get this done faster anyhow I do have a video that I want to make and I'm trying to do that today um, it's, uh, but I need the sun really to do it in, in the best fashion. This berry cam is not letting me keep y'all in the cam as good as I want. Um, I'm going to try to get that done today because it's going to help some people. I'm not sure that it'll help a lot of people, but it'll, it'll help some. Got a few inventions I want to show you. So let me put y'all on fast speed. Maybe I can do this better. Yeah, what I'm going to do is let the let the berry cam help me out in a different way. Check out Joby. Joby's got a good grip on this blueberry. He's got a good grip here. It's holding this for me. So now I can use both my hands and get this done faster before the rain hits again. But I wanted to show, show you all that. That's another, another good use for it. But I'm going to take a little break for nature here and show you what I found. That little booger again is a caterpillar that looks kind of scary and I know that it's not a gulf fritillary butterfly it's not those don't hurt you those spikes that the gulf fritillary butterfly have on them they look scary but they're not going to hurt you that booger I don't know what it is so I'm not just going to rub my hand all over it those spikes look mean and they could be but we're going to let him be if he starts building a cocoon around here, maybe uh, maybe we'll get to see him uh, be be born too, or rebirthed. You know, when they shed their their uh, chrysalis stage. Now let me get my two hands in here and get these berries picked, because I got to have a lot more than that. People of all ages and experience levels that watch my videos, just as I am. I have I'm somewhere in the middle of experience with growing things of all kinds. Um, and I wanted to bring up something that bears repeating. And, okay, this stump here, this is one of my favorite stumps. I started on my 27 Days Till Spring Challenge here. And a few episodes ago, we went through the trauma of me losing my plum tree and uh, the fact that it was ridden with a, uh, a fungal disease and that I wasn't getting any uh, uh, wasn't getting a harvest out of it because of that. And I had to cut it down. 
it's it's that one right there the 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 stump that y'all see um in in a previous episode there but um what i wanted to tell you that does bear repeating okay i lost that i lost this tree and any harvest i could get from it but because i have different species on my property okay i didn't get a harvest from the plums but i'm getting blueberries i had strawberries earlier so to make it quick um on your property and whenever you're doing things have multiple species of plants that you can eat um especially if they're fruit bearing um have have many different kinds as much diversity on your property as you can they will ripen at different times and if one fails you'll have the others persimmons are a wonderful tree to have so are different kinds of nut trees um but each year their harvest may vary if you've got different species what may be a bad year for one will be an excellent year for another and when we're talking about food production and actually making your place into a, your own Garden of Eden, that's one of the key assets. If you have multiple species, disease will not wipe out everything that you're counting on. You'll have other things that are not affected by disease or bad years. Um, most fruit and nut trees, well, let me put it this way, persimmons, and many different kinds of nut trees will take uh, a year off. They'll take a break. You'll have uh, heavier production on a persimmon one year than you will on the next year. Um, so learn about these cycles. Learn more about all these different species and how they can help you. All right, I do have some sun, and I'm going to get to the uh, get to the point of this here video that I'm trying to make. You know, a couple of episodes back, um, I got this fennel. Uh, this dog fennel, and I set it over there. I'm not sure. If, I'm not even sure if I made that in the clip. Um, now I make so many and then remake them, and you know, there's a lot to making these videos, even as bad as I make them. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm not sure what I've shown so far. I'm going to show you a few ideas. You know, I've talked about these tubs many times in my past videos. They are wonderful. These are concrete mixing tubs. You can find them at many of your um, uh, home improvement stores throughout the world. Um, they are wonderful to have. Most of them are food grade plastic. You've seen me growing in these, growing food in these. You can actually prepare your food in these. You can even serve your food in these. They're food grade. Okay? So... Uh, and they're very durable. Uh, this one is called uh, Odd Job. That's the brand name. There's probably a big factory that makes a lot of these and stamps a different name on all of them. And uh, you pay different prices for them. But I have so, uh, so many past episodes where I've used these. Plenty of uses for them around the homestead, around your home. Your homestead could be any of any size, Okay. What, these are invaluable to have at your house. So are wasps, but that'll be for an, another episode. Now, I've got a lot of sun, and it's awful hot. Well, it's not that hot. Not that hot. But this water in here gets very hot, and um, it, it can. The sun is, is soaked up by the darker colors, right? So, that gave me a great idea. Now, this is actually what I use to bathe my dog in. She can't stand water. I'll show you a clip um, of that right after this little talk I'm doing now. But basically, we've got this tote here, this, uh, this tub, and I've got two holes. I've got a hole there, and I've got a hole here with a piece of paracord running between it, and a carabiner locks in right there. That locks into her collar, okay? Um, and I'm able to bathe my little dog that goes absolutely nuts around water. She can't stand it. So this makes it easier. That is what the dog groomers do. When you take your dog to a professional dog groomer, they hook them into the sink, and it's, and it's something like this. That keeps the dogs from thrashing around, or the cats or whatever, mainly the dogs. So 
if you've got a difficult situation like that, you know, you're only limited to the size of the container. Now, this is two of these uh, little mixing tubs that are into one another. And they're not the same exact si same exact kind, so they didn't mesh real well. But yours can. Get you two of them. That's holding the water. This is holding the, uh, the dog leash in place. Okay, this is one little invention for you. Somebody else may have done this. I don't know. I've never seen it. So there's one for you. And now, okay, look at those holes there. If you've got a tote like this, what can you do with it? All right. What I'm going to show you how to make is a solar food dehydrator out of one of these. And I'm going to make you, a, uh, I'm going to show you another couple of ways. Not all of us have food dehydrators. Um, they can be kind of expensive. Not all of us want to spend the power, the energy to run them. Some of us may not be able to. Maybe you have an off-grid property. Maybe your um, electricity usage is extremely important. You can dehydrate things in, um, in a car. There's so many ways that you can dehydrate your own food. Um, I'm going to show you one here. All up in the middle of my project, and I had a visitor. Where'd it go? Oh, it's gone. <laughs> How you like that close-up action on those blueberries? <laughs> Don't they look good? <laughs> oh, well, the rain has held off for me a lot, but it is, um, it's going to be moving in soon. It's already starting to darken up, and I've got rain close to me. So, my, uh, my, my, my picking and my video making is about to come to an end. I want those berries so bad, but I can't get to them. Why? What is preventing me to get to them? It's this. It is a window screen off of uh, someone's windows, and they threw a bunch of them away. And I said, hey, can I have that? And it's been in storage for a while. I've got a few of them. I took one of them apart and uh, cut me out some mesh. Um, what I'm talking about today is, uh, like I mentioned before in the video, um, making solar food dehydrators. Um, my idea is to make one out of this uh, concrete mixing tub. And instead of showing you the completed version of it today, I wanted to do something else. Thought I'll just change my change my video, um, time constraints and rain and the fact that people need something like this or some people do. Um, I don't have a big place. I'm in the shed wars and I don't have um, you know the ability to make a whole lot of food. Um, you know I can make some and I can eat some right now. Uh huh. But there's other people that do. What if you want to dehydrate your food? What if you've got uh, a huge harvest? Maybe you've only got one food dehydrator. You've got two. Or maybe you just got so dang much that you just can't get it all. And it goes to waste. What something like this will do would be to help you. Um, um, I'm trying to eat a blueberry and talk. Um, it would help you save your harvest. Um, in a faster way, you know, save more of it. Something like this is what I'm working on. Now, there's things to consider, you know, whenever you've got uh, food dehydration. You want to make sure that you've got the heat applied to it. The sun will provide that. There is nothing like this black, this big old black tub right here to soak up some sun. And you got to think about that, that getting that solar radiation hitting it, that sunlight. You also have to think about um, keeping it up off of the bottom, right? Anytime you're, anytime you're um, dehydrating food, it's all about that airflow. And so this right here, this piece of um, quarter inch, this little quarter inch uh, mesh here, this floats above the bottom of this tub. You know, this is not finished. I'm just starting on it. 
Um, so I've got all my my invention, all my mad, crazy inventor stuff out here. Just having a ball. But what I'm going to do with this in another episode, I'll make a shorter episode. This is more like a daily vlog today. Just what am I doing? All right. Um, what I'm going to do with this is I may use another tote. I don't know. We'll have to. I've got another one that I'm probably going to use for that video. But y'all have seen these, and if you haven't, you have now. What I'm going to do on this side is I'm going to bring in a, a long, a long air opening down here, okay? And I'm going to put some screen on it. And that way, that screen will hopefully keep out most of any bugs that want to eat my harvest before I have a chance to dehydrate it. Same thing it'll do for you. Um, and you're going to want to cover the top of this. And as you saw, I've got the screen. Now, there's ways that we can build these to where they have frames. Okay. And we're probably going to make a frame that is um, removable easily. But there's all kinds of ways that you can do things. Um, you know. I've thought about this, and this is going to be like my invention, um, but so many of us have these. I think it's best that I do something like this. Let's, um, let's join forces and come up with all kinds of new ways to, to, to use these, and specifically today on this video, um, I'd like to see people um, come up with a little friendly competition of who can build the best solar dehydrator but not just for these, however you make them. I have seen some wonderful ones, some huge ones um, that are made out of wood and glass and all kinds of amazing things. Um, the airflow is what's most important. I'm going to get air coming up from, from this side here. It's going to come over through the food that I've got and up out this side. You want that hot air to be able to, or the air to come in, get heated up, and then leave. You know, and I'm probably going to aim it at the sun like it's a solar panel so that we get maximum production. It'll have some tilt, probably have a little bit of tilt there, not a whole lot. <laughs> but this is something that I'm working on, and I'll have it finished and uh, make another video that's shorter for the Let's Dehydrate um, collaboration that Page Family Homestead has uh, offered up to us. It's amazing. These blueberries are probably not going to get dehydrated. I'm probably going to eat every one of them. Okay? <laughs> nah, they're not going to get dehydrated. Sorry about that hard cut from um, earlier. Okay. Here's what we've got. Page Family Homestead, our journey back. That is who has put on the Let's Dehydrate collaboration. It's uh, hashtag let's dehydrate. Let me see through here. Okay. All right. There we go. Let's dehydrate. That's a collaboration there. And you'll see other YouTubers um, that have joined in with that collab. It's awesome. What I'd like to see and uh, introduce to folks is a chance to let some... Um, um, Let's 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 show our best off-grid solar powered dehydrators. Not everybody has a, a regular uh, dehydrator. Um, I think I've already mentioned this. I have exclusively. I ramble too much and I'm getting old, so I apologize. So everything that I just said, um, you know, just do that. <laughs> but and I wanted to give a shout out to Cabin Creek Homestead. They're a new YouTube channel, and they've entered Shed Wars. I have just discovered them uh, yesterday through Frank and Tina's um, uh, Shed Wars update video that they do, once a, I think once a week. They work hard uh, on making all those videos, and they're not even in competition. They are helpers to all of us in the Shed Wars uh, to show what's going on and give updates to uh, how the battle is waging. And uh, Cabin Creek, they, 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 they seem like they've got a pretty good channel. I'm happy I found them. 
Uh, and if I remember right, they said that they're in Tennessee and, um, you know, from one, one self-professed hillbilly down here in Alabama, that is actually a Tennessee transplant, uh, to another hillbilly. And I think you're in Tennessee. I say, welcome to YouTube shed wars and good luck. Glad to have you in here. And I bet that y'all, I bet y'all know something about that, uh, off the grid, uh, kind of life. Most of us think about that. Um, I'd like to see what y'all can come up with, with the solar dehydrators. You may already have one. Um, but let's, um, let's get some of this going. You know, um, there's, there's, there, what was I, I've, I've done forgotten some of the things I wanted to say. We're going to have airflow. Let me get this out of the way. We got to have airflow through here. Anytime that you're making something on your own, you want to be safe. All right. So let me, let me make sure that I say that. All right. Be safe with what you're doing. Food grade. Use food grade plastics in what you're doing. Um, now what, what you saw earlier, where is it? Dang it. Where's my secretary? I need a secretary. Need a, need a helper. Need an intern. Secretaries cost money. Interns are free. Right. <laughs> um, I showed you this and this is the uh, quarter inch uh, galvanized um, hardware cloth. I use it for a lot of stuff, but it's galvanized. It, it whenever they make this wire, it's all welded together um, in, in whatever process that they do. And I'm sure it's something awesome. Um, but then. It goes through a process where it enters a tank. Anything that's galvanized does. It enters a tank of extremely hot solution of zinc in solution. And it's electroplated. The zinc comes out of the solution and attaches itself to the metal. A lot like they do gold-plated earrings, you know, for the ladies that um, have, have earrings. And I know my subscribers, it's all pure gold. But there are some electroplated out there, right? That's the same process. They hook a couple of electrodes into it, positive and negative. It goes into a tank that has metallic ions in it. And those attach to the metal. Uh, and, it, and it becomes what looks like pure gold. Uh, or, or in this case, pure zinc. But what happens is, if you use zinc, if you use this hardware cloth like this, uh, some of your food will be okay. But some of it is going to have a lot of acid in it. And the acid will break down the zinc and ha give that a chance to enter your food and then enter your body. You don't want all that extra zinc in your body. Uh, amongst other things, extra zinc in your body can cause neuropathy. Yeah, you, we, we, we want to feel all of our parts for as long as we can. So let's keep away from zinc. Um, so what you just keep that in mind. And there's wax paper. There's parchment paper. Um, aluminum foil. You know, still, that's going to have some acid transfer. Or you can have whatever. Whatever it is, make sure it's food grade. Um, this, since it'll be outside, I will have to keep it, uh, keep a watch on it to make sure that uh, it doesn't get rained on. But there's a lot of people that are in dry places that, that pray for rain. Okay? And this is something that y'all can use. I mean, y'all could just set something out for a minute and it's dried out, you know. Um... But anyhow, let me show you this real quick. This little booger here. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, bless y'all if you're still watching. Yeah, look at here. See something like that? Yeah. You can use this as a dehydrator. Again, just want to make sure that you've got airflow coming in one side and it able, it's able to flow across your food that's in there and come out the top. You want that airflow. It's got to be hot. It's got to be getting that sun, and that air's got to be able to flow through it. You want to keep the bugs out. You want to keep the rain out. So I'd love to see what you folks can do. I have in mind to make, make one with this. All right, I'm an experimental kind of guy. I like doing things like this. Now here's this one. <laughs> Look at this. Let me see. Hold on. Let me go get its brother. Oh, and I just about busted my butt over here in my gravel-floored outdoor kitchen. There you go. That's what it looks like before, in case you can't figure out what that beast is. 
just your regular old two or three liter bottles or any size bottle really what i've done here okay you can see a little bit of con condensation in there right now what i've done is i've cut it along the bottom here cut it along the bottom and then put a piece of this hardware cloth in here now this this could be just use as an example of what you might want to do right and then in one of the little in those little divots right there i opened up a hole cut it out and put a piece of that mesh in there with a little bit of duct tape not duct tape but electrical tape now, electrical tape won't hold up in the sun very well, but silicone will. And 100% silicone uh, is used in food production, too, so that should be safe after it's cleared out. And what I did here, this is kind of slick. On this end, on this end, I took the bottle out, cut a hole in it, put a little piece of that mesh in it, and then boom, we have got a bug proof, well, a bug proof to the size of a window screen, whatever screen you got. That will let out the uh, moisture laden water, the uh, the air, you know, that comes from your dehydration. Now, you could make a few of these if, you know, now, what if you want to dehydrate flowers or herbs or something like that, something that's very dry, you know, um, then the galvanization may not may not affect it too much, you know. Um, and also, what if you just got a little something that you want to dehydrate? You know, something like this could be wonderful for little small batches, right? Little small batch dehydration. There's so many ways to do things. Um, and that's something that I thought of. I put some blueberries in there, but they roll around a little bit too much. <laughs> the way I've got it set up. But, uh, yeah, you can see that. This is my crazy mind at work, people. This is what I, this is what keeps me up at night. <laughs> but Shed Wars um, it, it is about us helping one another grow food, save the harvest out, and prepare for a time when we may not have that much food. Um, and let's dehydrate that collaboration by Page Family Homestead is offered us as a way to join together and show off how we save our harvests. So let's join together in with Page Family Homestead and join their Let's Dehydrate collaboration. I'd love to see a lot of people doing that. And I'd like to see people, um, you know, seeing what they can make, seeing what kind of solar dehydrator they can make out of this or anything else or the two liter bottles or your ideas, your original ideas. And, uh, you know, South Paul Davey always says it's nice to be nice. You know, if, if you do something like this, you want to join up, throw, you know, kick back a, a mention to me or something, you know, say, hey, you know, the crazy old man Homestead Aquarius showed me this and I want to show him the version. So do something like that, you know, and let's join together in a cooperative uh, effort and uh, a fun little competition, if you want to call it that. But anyhow, long-winded old man, you know, I try to give you some short videos. I can't do it today. What I'm going to do, though, is I will break out each of the things I've shown you. The dog washing tub. I will show you um, this uh, this tub here. And, and probably the other one, the little, uh, this, this little cake pan. And I'll make shorter videos that I can add to my little invention series playlist so that, you know, anybody can find them. But uh, today from Homestead Aquarius on this very long episode, I appreciate each and every one of you. And um, I hope you have a great day. And I hope to see you back tomorrow. Goodbye.